This is Ashish Chaure from Quantum Design. On behalf of Quantum Design sales team, Dr. Sheely and Dr. Katyaini Seal, I would like to welcome everyone to today's webinar on exploring sub-Kelvin measurements with continuous ADR cryostats from QTRA. The presenter, Dr. Alexander Regna, is the CEO and founder of QTRA. As usual, we will conduct the Q&A session towards the end of the talk. Please feel free to list your questions in the Q&A window and we'll make every effort to answer all of those. Also note, all registered participants will receive the recording. And before we dive in to the webinar, let me give you a brief background on our operations in North America. I'm sure most of you are familiar with quantum design. We are a manufacturer and a distributor of scientific instrumentation products. And each of our office has its own mix of distribution partners. Our MPMS, Magnetic Property Measurement System, and PPMS, Physical Property Measurement System, have been the backbone of many condensed matter physics and material science laboratories. We now also offer a magneto optical cryostat optical and a range of liquid helium plants. In the current times, most of our systems are also being used in studying novel quantum materials. And some of these studies require measurements at millikelvin temperatures. Our typical systems run down to 1.7 Kelvin, and these are used to study electrical transport, heat capacity, thermal and magnetic measurements. ULT, ultra low temperature measurements, are typically classified as measurements below 1 Kelvin. And these in our systems are achieved using either a helium-3 insert down to 400 millikelvin, a dilution fridge insert down to 50 millikelvin, or an ADR insert down to 100 millikelvin, but you cannot use magnetic field with the ADR insert. All of these inserts help to extend the temperature range in our measurement platforms to the desired millikelvin temperature based on the insert being used. However, it is not possible to perform any custom measurements in any of these inserts. This then brings us to the topic of today's presentation. The CADR cryostat from QTRA helps scientists to perform custom sub 1K measurements. We also distribute single photon detection system from single quantum, time taggers and quantum education quits from Q tools, direct right lithography systems from Durham Magneto Optics, optical tweezers to study cold atoms from Arisis, and a novel in situ AFM tool for use in SEM and FIB systems. I would not like to take any further time of yours and hence handing over the stage to Dr. Alexander for today's presentation. Thank you. Hi everybody, welcome to this webinar. My name is Alexander Rignat and I am the CEO and one of the co-founders of QTRA. Today I would like to present the technology behind our magnetic refrigerators and show you how to carry out a typical low temperature resistivity measurement using our L-type cryostat. To start with, let me take a minute to introduce our company QTRA. At QTRA, 
Our mission is to provide cryogen-free sub-Kelvin cooling for science and technology. We focus on easy-to-use turnkey cryostats to support scientists in their fundamental research and to accelerate the development, testing and pre-characterization of quantum hardware and related electronics. Our cooling platforms offer continuous sub-Kelvin cooling independent of liquid cooling media, notably the rare and costly helium-3. We view this essential to providing cryogenic temperatures in a simple, compact and cost-efficient way. Moreover, we believe that non-helium-3 refrigerators are a key requirement for future scalable applications of quantum electronics. Qtra is based in Munich, Germany and was founded in 2018 as a spin-off from the Technical University of Munich. In 2019, we moved to our new production and head office in downtown Munich. We are happy to report that since then we have been able to gather an excellent team of physicists, engineers and software developers with many years of hands-on experience in cryoengineering and low temperature research and who share our vision of easy to use cryogen free refrigerators. It is thanks to this team that we can offer advice and in-depth technical support for our customers. And of course. We are excited to have Quantum Design as a strong partner to complement our services and to provide professional assistance and support for our customers in North America, China, Taiwan and Southeast Asia. Qtra is an active part of the scientific community. Doing our own R&D to constantly improve our magnetic refrigeration technology and to come up with innovative, truly cryogen-free cooling solutions. This is reflected, for example, in our close collaboration with quantum hardware companies and university research groups. Thanks to our close connection to TUM in particular, we have several master and bachelor students on board working with us on their scientific projects. Our own scientific background, partnerships and active exchange with scientists from all around the world give us a good understanding of the pains and needs that arise in everyday lab life when working with low temperature equipment. This helps us to build products that make low temperature research more pleasant and safe. Now let me start the technical section by briefly introducing magnetic refrigeration, the cooling technique our products are based on. Magnetic refrigeration is a well-established technique that was proposed and implemented back in the 1930s. It can be used to generate sub-Kelvin temperatures by exploiting the magnetic field dependence of the entropy of a spin system. This is illustrated in the graph on the right, which shows the entropy of cerium magnesium nitrate, a typical spin 1 half refrigerant, as a function of temperature and magnetic field. At high temperatures, the spins are randomly oriented and their entropy is constant. In contrast, at low temperatures the entropy of a spin system is a function of the magnetic field and the temperature T. In this regime, reducing the magnetic field from point B to point C under adiabatic conditions, this is while keeping the entropy constant, will result in a decrease in temperature. For this reason, magnetic cooling is also referred to as adiabatic demagnetization refrigeration or ADR for short. A variety of materials can be used for magnetic refrigeration. As shown in this graph, some promise high cooling capacity, while others can go down to very low temperatures. The choice of the cooling material will therefore depend on the intended purpose and cooling requirements. Now let's have a look at how ADR is technically implemented to build a sub-Kelvin refrigerator. In a cryogen-free setup, we use a closed-cycle cryocooler to provide a main thermal bath of about 4 Kelvin. It will be used to pre-cool our ADR cooling medium to a temperature where the total entropy of the material is dominated by the magnetic entropy, this is the contribution of the spin subsystem. The cooling medium is connected to the cryocooler through a heat switch on one end and to the sample stage that contains the experimental setup on the other end. Finally, the medium is surrounded by a superconducting magnet, which allows us to magnetize and eventually demagnetize the medium during the ADR process. At the beginning of the ADR process, the heat switch is closed 
and both the ADR cooling medium and the attached sample stage are cooled to the cryocooler base temperature of about 4 Kelvin. Then the cooling medium is magnetized by driving a current into the superconducting coil. The heat of magnetization is released and dissipated in the main thermal bath provided by the cryocooler. After the maximum magnetic field has been reached, the system relaxes back to its base temperature. Now the heat switch is opened, breaking the thermal connection between pre-cooling unit and the cooling medium. By reducing the magnetic field adiabatically, the temperature of the ADR cooling medium drops, cooling the attached sample stage. Usually the medium isn't completely demagnetized. Instead, the magnetic field is tuned to settle a target temperature and the remaining magnetic field is used to compensate for thermal leaks from radiation, heat leaks through the support structure and wiring, as well as heat generated by the experimental setup. Thus, by further reducing the magnetic field and fully demagnetizing the cooling medium, the temperature can be stabilized for a limited period of time, the whole time, which is typically several hours. Once the magnetic field has been reduced to zero, the process can be repeated. The time to regenerate the cooling medium, this is to remagnetize and thermalize the cooling medium, is typically between one and two hours, resulting in duty cycles of 70 to 95%, depending on the cooling medium used. The ADR cooling principle comes with a couple of advantages. With ADR cryostats, the cooling process, even into the millikelvin range, can be realized completely without the use of cryogens. This makes their operation very simple and safe and decreases maintenance costs and downtimes. Due to their direct magnetic temperature control, our cryostats allow to stabilize low set point temperatures very accurately. But they also offer continuous temperature sweeps from the subkelvin regime up to room temperature. Finally, thanks to our custom-made compensated magnets and an optimized system geometry, residual fields at the sample position are very small in our cryostats and can be additionally shielded using mu metal if necessary. The most obvious disadvantage of ADR is the limited hold time available for the experiment before the measurement needs to be paused to regenerate the cooling medium. Fortunately for experiments and applications that really require permanent cooling, the limitation of one-shot ADR can be overcome. In fact, Uter is the first supplier to implement both one-shot ADR and continuous ADR or CADR for short. In a CADR cryostat, multiple ADR units are combined and carefully balanced to provide continuous cooling down to the sub kelvin temperature range. To illustrate the working principle of CADR, we consider a system with two ADR units where, similar to the one-shot configuration, the first unit is connected to the main thermal bath via heat switch. In contrast to the one-shot setup, now a second ADR is added. It is on one end connected to the first ADR unit using another heat switch and on the other end to the sample stage. These two units will work together to extract heat from the sample platform and to pump it into the 4 Kelvin thermal bath. At the beginning, both the first and the second ADR unit are fully magnetized and connected through their respective heat switches. Both cooling media as well as the sample stage therefore initially have the temperature provided by the cryocooler. First, Unit 2 is decoupled from Unit 1 and demagnetized, cooling the sample stage down to the target temperature. Now the first ADR unit is disconnected from the bath and demagnetized. This time however, we settle a temperature well below the set point temperature of Unit 2. If we close the heat switch between both ADR units, ADR number 2 can be regenerated while at the same time the temperature of the sample stage is kept constant. After unit 1 is depleted, the connection between the two units is opened and unit 1 is regenerated at the temperature of the cryocooler. This procedure can be repeated infinitely to provide continuous cooling at the sample stage. In this way, the one-shot limitation of ADR cryostats can be overcome, 
making a completely cryogen-free continuous operation at sub-Kelvin temperatures possible. Besides the serial two-stage configuration which I've just presented, many different CADR layouts can be realized, including serial or parallel configurations and even combinations thereof. The optimal configuration depends on the demands of the experimentalists and the specific experimental conditions and our tech team is happy to discuss the best solution for you. Before we start with the hands-on laboratory part of this webinar, let me give you a quick overview of our cryostats, which are based on ADR or CADR technology. Qtra offers three types of cryostat, each optimized for specific customer applications and needs. First, the S-Type Essential, a versatile and ultra-compact sub-Kelvin system that offers a large sample space for complex customer setups and can serve, for instance, as a platform for the continuous operation of quantum detectors. Second, the S-Type Optical, a compact sub-Kelvin cryostat derived from the S-Type Essential. It offers free beam optical access and an easily accessible sample stage as well as ultra-precise temperature control. Third, our L-Type Rapid, a fast characterization tool offering top loading of samples, continuous operation down to 300 mK and one-shot operation to 100 mK with sample cooldown times of less than 3 hours. To give you a better understanding of the architecture of our cryostats, we take a closer look at the S-Type Essential. Beneath the casing, the S-Type Essential, just like any other cryostat, is based on a vacuum vessel equipped with a closed cycle cryocooler. One distinction, however, is the rectangular shape of the vessel, increasing the available volume compared to a cylindrical system, while maintaining a small footprint. Covered by the radiation shields, the system has two main cooling stages, one at 40 Kelvin and one at 4 Kelvin, both of which are coupled to the cold stages of the cryocooler. Additionally, the system can integrate up to two magnetic cooling units. Each cooling unit consists of a cooling medium, a superconducting magnet and a heat switch, which is used to connect or disconnect the cooling medium to the 4K plate during the regeneration or cooling phase respectively. While the magnet and the heat switch are mounted onto the 4K plate, the cooling medium is thermally connected to the sample stage to cool the experimental setup. The S-Type Essential offers a large, rectangular sample platform which can accommodate a complex customer setup, detector arrays or other low temperature electronics. Finally, the system is mounted in a modular 19-inch rack, with one module holding the cryostat and another module including all system electronics as well as space for customer electronics. In this configuration, the S-Type Essential offers continuous cooling at 300 mK and one-shot operation down to 100 mK, with a hold time exceeding 3 hours. Additionally, the system features one large sample platform and two large user ports for custom wiring such as RF lines or optical fibers. Our second system, the S-Type Optical, is a sub-Kelvin cryostat with free beam optical access. It is based on the same geometry as the S-Type Essential, with a cryocooler and 40K and 4K cold stages. However, instead of a large sample platform, the system features a cold finger type sample stage pointing out of the cryostat top plate. In this configuration, the cryostat can provide free beam optical access through several windows, with a small working distance to the sample. Additionally, the cold finger type sample stage enables a straightforward sample exchange. The cap can simply be removed by loosening a couple of screws to access the sample platform and mount an experiment. To reduce the vibration level, the S-Type Optical's cryocooler uses a remote rotary valve, which is mounted on a heavy ground plate. During operation, the rotary valve can be decoupled from the dewer, reducing vibrations to the low micrometer regime. In the standard configuration, the S-Type Optical features one high-capacity ADR stage for one-shot operation to 800 mK with a hold time exceeding 30 hours at 1 Kelvin. 
the sample stage has a diameter of 41 mm and offers enough space for a stack of piezo positioners. With our optional low resistance wiring, the positioners can be operated over the whole temperature range from room temperature down to below 1 Kelvin. For high frequency measurements, up to 4 RF lines can be added. Finally, Qtra offers the L-Type Rapid. While relying on the same technology as the S-Type cryostats, our L-Type cryostats feature a larger vacuum vessel. Similar to the S-Type systems, it is equipped with several radiation shields and a 40K and 4K cold plate. The larger volume, however, allows to integrate up to four magnetic cooling units, arranged in an essentially circular pattern. As probably the most important component, the L-Type Rapid features our proprietary puck-based top-loading sample exchange mechanism. It allows to transfer a sample automatically to the low temperature stage, where the sample is cooled to the minimum temperature of 100 mK within less than 3 hours, as we will demonstrate later in this webinar. In the standard configuration, the L-Type Rapid offers continuous cooling at 300 mK and one-shot operation down to 100 mK. The sample puck comes with 40 DC and up to 4 RF connections. For material characterization, the L-Type Rapid can be equipped with an optional sample magnet providing up to 5 Tesla magnetic field. Now, in the last part of this webinar, I would like to demonstrate how to use the L-Type Rapid and our instrument control and measurement software for a simple low temperature experiment. I will demonstrate how to carry out an AC resistivity measurement on a titanium sample where we track the superconducting transition at around 500 mK and suppress the transition by the application of an external magnetic field. The L-Type Rapid features our puck-based sample transfer mechanism, so the first thing to do is to prepare the sample on the sample puck. The sample puck has a platform which can accommodate customer setups and samples of up to 36 mm in diameter and 100 mm in height. The puck connects 40 DC lines via bondable terminals as well as up to 4 additional RF lines via mini SMP connectors. After preparing the sample on the puck, a final test can be carried out on our sample puck station. In this example we just check that all solder connections are good using a standard voltmeter. However, the sample puck station features PNC connectors for all puck lines, allowing for complex room temperature tests involving more sophisticated measurement electronics. Once we are sure that our sample is prepared properly, the sample puck is picked up using the sample transfer cage. A special mechanism locks the sample puck in the transfer cage and the puck can be safely transported to the cryostat. The automatic sample loading process can be started in our instrument control software with a few clicks and guides the user through the sample loading process. First, we make sure that the puck is secured in the transfer cage. Then the transfer cage is inserted into the vacuum lock. The automatic gas handling system starts the pumping process and the door can be closed as soon as it is indicated by the software. Once sufficient vacuum conditions are reached, the gate valve is opened and the cage is loaded into the cryostat. The puck is firmly mounted onto the sample stage and automatically detached from the transfer cage. The system is now cooling the puck down to the base temperature and is ready to perform measurements. And I want to show you now how this kind of measurements can be done using our Python-based open source control software. We start the software by pressing the Qtra launcher symbol on the desktop of the supplied measurement PC. From the launcher we start the instrument control software by clicking the play button. Then we open the user interface by clicking the GUI button. You can now log into the graphical user interface by entering your username and password. The graphical interface is structured as follows. The main menu is located on the top of the window and is used to configure the control software and open further dialogs. The upper part of the left side shows the status of all essential system parameters. The main control panel is located on the lower left side. 
It contains multiple tabs to display different system components. The number of these tabs may vary depending on the system configuration. The ADR tab provides the magnetic temperature control settings and is used to perform measurements in the magnetically controlled temperature regime between 100 mK and approximately 8 K. The heater tab provides control over the system heater and allows for continuous temperature sweeps from base to room temperature. If the cryostat comes with a sample magnet, the next tab allows to control the ladder by setting the target field and field ramp rate. The sample tab is used to control the automatic sample changer. The cryostat control panel is used to start the automatic cooling routine and to stop and suspend the system. Finally, the devices tab gives an overview of all active devices and controllers of the instrument. So let's start an experiment. In our example, the cryostat has been cooled down to the cryocooler base temperature and we now want to start an experiment by loading our sample puck. We move to the sample tab and enter a sample reference and experiment name. Then we hit the load button and the software guides us through the sample loading process. After finishing the process, we can monitor the cooldown of the sample puck in the history viewer. By navigating to history and selecting the appropriate time duration and thermometers, we monitor the cooldown of the puck until it thermalizes at the cryocooler base temperature. This process takes around one hour and the resulting temperature curve looks like this. Now we would like to demonstrate the measurement of the superconducting properties of a polycrystalline titanium sample, which is supposed to undergo a superconducting transition below about 500 mK. For the purpose of our measurement, we have mounted the sample on the sample puck and contacted it in a four-point configuration. We use a signal recovery 7230 lock-in amplifier to measure the resistivity of our sample. To prepare the measurement, we define our measurement configuration in the configuration tab and choose the SR7230 as a detector and the sample temperature and magnetic field as environment parameters. Now we want to explore the magnetic field dependence of the resistance at 300 mK. Therefore, we first initialize the continuous magnetic cooling. We navigate to the ADR tab and enter a target temperature and rate. By hitting the recharge and play button, the ADR units automatically regenerate and cool the sample down to the desired target temperature. The continuous operation is stabilized after approximately one hour. Then we navigate to the sample magnet tab to program a magnetic field sweep from 0 to 0.1 Tesla. We start the measurement by pressing the play button. Meanwhile, we can monitor the recorded data in the scans window. Of course, measurements can be fully automated using the integrated Python script editor. To show how this works, we program a set of temperature sweeps from 100 mK to 700 mK at different magnetic fields. We execute the script by pressing the play button and can monitor the executed command in the terminal window in the lower right corner. The results can be examined in the scan tab, where additional features such as sample curve fitting tools or the possibility to combine different scans are available. We choose the first sweep at zero magnetic field and find our superconducting transition at approximately 480 mK. By combining all measurements in the scan tab, we find the expected suppression of the superconducting phase as a function of the magnetic field. Once our measurement is completed, we unload the sample by pressing the unload button and follow the instructions given by the control software. If we check the terminate experiment checkbox, our measurement data together with a log file and system parameters will be automatically zipped and stored on the measurement PC. Through the QTR loader, the measurement data can be easily accessed by clicking the data button. I hope this gave you a good impression of our L-Type Rapid and how it can be used for fast, low temperature measurements. So to sum up, in this webinar we have introduced the ADR and CADR cooling principles and shown how they are implemented in our cryostats. Depending on your needs, you can choose between our compact S-Type platform, allowing for either rack integration or optical access, 
or the larger and fast L-Type Rapid for rapid prototyping and material characterization. Thank you for joining this webinar. I hope to talk to you soon about your low temperature research and your cooling requirements. Okay, thank you for your attention. Uh, let me see if we have any questions here. Give me a minute. Yeah, I hope uh, the, uh, the webinar was very clear. Uh, there is a question here about the electric electricity consumption of the total system. It has a superconducting magnet plus cryocooler working. So what are the, I would think maybe the requirements for the electricity for the system? Yeah, thank you for the question. So um, the, the uh, power consumption and uh, is, is dominated, of course, by the closed cycle cryocooler. Um, we typically use um, cryocoolers um, by Sumitomo Heavy Industries um, and um, parts tube cryocoolers with a typical power consumption in the steady state of 6.5 to 7 kilowatt. Um, and there will be an, a maximum additional power consumption for a fully featured system of up to 2 kilowatt um, if you use the really a, a multi-stage um, CADR system with several superconducting magnets. I hope that answers the question. If uh, if anyone wants to ask a question, uh, I can uh, also unmute you. But let's go to the second question. Is the residual magnetic field of the sample spatially uniform? And does it very in time. So the the variation in time uh, is is different uh, depending on whether you are operating the device in a CADR control mode or one shot ADR mode. So for all our systems, uh, both are available, and this also gives you the opportunity to switch if uh, minimum um, time um, variation in time is, is key. Um, Still, the variation in both modes is very small because demagnetization cooling, um, for demagnetization cooling, we typically change the magnetic field at a um, rate of um, 0.01 Tesla per minute. So the fluctuations and changes are very small, um, particularly, and, and I assume the question um, comes up because um, you, you would like to operate or, or measure superconducting devices. Um, so the, the change in uh, the fluctuations in the field are, um, are on a much um, wider, um, longer time scale compared to typical coherence time, for instance. Okay. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Can the control software to lab view, can the software interface be LabVIEW so that the measurement instruments is controlled by LabVIEW and synced with the temperature control? So we don't offer a, a readily available driver for LabVIEW, but we have an open API and you can use this uh, to, to interface with LabVIEW or any other high uh, level um, programming language. Uh, so that is possible, yes. I think the same uh, person has asked a question, does the lock-ins come with the system or need to be prepared by user separately? No, so they, they won't come with the system. Of course, we can integrate them uh, on demand, but usually they're not included uh, because typically our customers do very um, different sorts of experiments and not everyone uh, requires a lock-in amplifier. Sure. Um, what is the maximum sample size and maximum number of leads that connect to the sample? Um, so, uh, does this question um, uh, address the, the, I assume it addresses the L-type rapid, because that's the system we showed uh, in, the, in the very end of the presentation. So here the system size, uh, so the sample space is constrained by the, the puck, the dimensions of the puck, um, and uh, we offer uh, up to 37 millimeters in diameter and 100 millimeters in height, which is uh, even sufficient to, to mount um, also larger um, objects and devices. So for like instance, uh, 
interposer board like these. So I hope you can see that. So that's a, a standard puck and it offers a lot of free space. It will also offer enough space to mount, for instance, high pressure apparatus like, like Bridgman cells or clamp cells. Um, so also setups that are not directly related to, to quantum matter research. Um, and um, the standard puck, the DC standard puck, um, holds 40 gold-plated um, bondable terminals, uh, so you can use them to either make solder connections or bond uh, on these terminals directly. Um, and we have also available an RF um, puck, uh, which additionally comes with um, four mini SMP connectors to make um, RF connections um, to the puck from your experimental setup. Okay, thank you. I think that answers the question on the L-type rapid. Here's a question for the optical system. How flexible are the window configurations, window material and window position? Yeah, so we, we have, of course, a standard setup, but we're very flexible indeed, um, because um, all that needs to be changed is the, the, the upper part uh, of the vacuum uh, vessel, so this lid. Um, where we then can offer various options uh, concerning the, the size and orientation um, of these windows. Thank you. There's another one on the vibration levels, and this is mainly for the optical system. I was I'm quite sure this question would be asked. Can you comment on the vibration levels in your optical system? Yeah, so right now the system is not really optimized for um, um, low vibration uh, level measurements. So um, we specify to below two micrometers uh, in the C axis. Um, so we're currently working on this to further reduce uh, the system vibrations to, to also be able to carry out um, these sorts of measurements that require very low nanometer um, vibration levels. Um, at the moment, this is unfortunately not possible. So if you really require these very low vibration levels, uh, I would ask you to, to wait um, a little bit. So we're working on that, um, but that's uh, not offered at the moment as a standard option. Okay, yeah. Is there a limit how low you could potentially cool with continuous ADR and what are your plans? How low do you think can you push continuous ADR? Uh, so I think we would certainly uh, would, would love to go um, clearly below 100 millikelvin, ideally even below 50 millikelvin, um, but um, that really is also a question of the use cases and applications. Um, so not all um, experiments really require these very low temperatures continuously, and also um, temperature is just one important parameter, so there's also cooling power, um, and we must, opti must optimize both, of course. Um, so there's a limit. The limit is just set by physics and the cooling media we're using. Um, and uh, with these, we can clearly go below the, the temperatures I've just mentioned, and that's also on our roadmap. But right now, our focus is um, uh, also the, uh, the, the quick testing, um, and um, there, usually um, most uh, measurements and experiments can already be done at these slightly higher temperatures and then backed by longer measurement times at, at 300 or 500 millikelvin. Uh, so I think there's already a lot uh, which you can do with these measurements and we're of course continuously improving our core technology and that will be made available in, in our future systems. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, there is a question here. Will there be temperature jitters when you connect or disconnect the thermal links? There, there is a ripple. That's why we specify um, the, the temperature stability um, for both the, the, um, the steady state and the switching state. Um, so we will have a, a very short peak um, where the temperature stability is um, um, poorer, so it's, uh, it's, it's about, um, I think it's uh, up to 2%, um, but only for a very short time, so it's just a very short pulse. Um, and um, the, the frequency of the ripple will depend on the heat load. So if you're applying a very small heat load, which is typically the case, the intervals between the ripples um, can be hours, so it, uh, you, it's typically, um, it doesn't, um, 
um, interfere with your experiment. Uh, and if it's really an issue, as I mentioned already earlier, you can always switch to a one-shot mode where this uh, CADR switching is, is turned off and uh, as a consequence, there will be um, no switch ripple left, of course. Uh, and could one use an optical fiber in the L-type rapid system? Yes, we can integrate optical fibers, but um, it's not compatible so far with the sample changer. So that's why we don't, don't offer this as a standard option. Um, so we would recommend to use, um, if you're interested in using um, optical fibers, to um, um, rather use the S-type essential, um, because there it's easily integrated. And that is a system that you would typically open to change a sample, while the L-type rapid was from the very beginning designed um, for the use together with the sample changer. Um, and um, we, we might develop this further into a direction where we can would also be, be able to make a remote um, optical fiber connection with a puck, but that's not available so far. Um, so here I'd rather recommend the S-type um, essential. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, there is a question, there are two people asking the same question now. What is the field orientation of the sample magnet, the five Tesla sample magnet? What is the orientation of that field? Yeah, it's a solenoid magnet and it's pointing in the C direction, so like this. Um, and it's vertical to the um, typical stray fields provided by the ADR magnets, which are in the perpendicular plane. Uh, and, and that is, of course, a requirement also um, for um, the usage of, of the sample loader because we want to top load the puck into the magnet bore. Um, and that's the, 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 the most straightforward uh, way to do this, obviously. Sure, sure. Yeah, there's a question here. Do you require any liquid helium to operate? No, I mean, there is a, a closed cycle cryocooler involved, but there's no liquid helium. Um, required, um, so no need to refill and transfer helium or liquid nitrogen at all. It's a fully cryogen-free system. Yeah, and can one can you explain how does a sample puck work? Mm -hmm. Yes, so the, the sample puck is in principle just a, a carrier. It's made of, of um, high-purity copper, which is gold-plated, so you can see it here actually. So the, just the lower part is the puck. And it contains on the bottom side, it contains an electrical connector, a high density electrical connector, which makes um, a counterpart, a receptacle inside the cryostat. And on the top part, it holds um, these bondable terminals and a, a plate um, where you can prepare any sort of, of experiment. So you can either mount a more complex experimental apparatus like um, pressure cells, for instance. You can just like we have shown in the webinar, um, attach a, a bulk sample using a varnish and bond it to these bondable terminals. But you could also have a more complex setup like it's shown here with interposer boards where you can um, prepare um, really uh, quantum systems um, uh, on these um, additional interposer boards and top load them uh, in, and cool them down very quickly uh, with the cryostat. So that's how, th how this is working. Um, in addition to the puck, to make this work, you will need um, a what we call a transfer cage, and it's of course included in the system. So this transfer cage grabs the puck from, from above, from the upper side, and holds it securely um, while it's lowered into the cryostat. And once the system is, is um, loaded, the, the transfer cage comes up again and can be removed from the vacuum lock. Uh, and can be, for instance, uh, used to, to prepare and, and transfer um, to the, the um, cryostat another puck. So the ideal um, mode to work with these systems to get a really high throughput workflow uh, is to have at least two pucks and transfer cages. So that's what we suggest um, to be able to prepare at least one puck while you're measuring the other one. And then you can um, very quickly unload one puck uh, and just load the next one, cool down, do the measurement, and repeat this. Um, so that's the, the 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 motivation for us um, to build the L-type rapid. It's really meant as a, a high throughput, fast characterization tool to um, carry out um, in a very easy, straightforward way low temperature measurements at sub-Kelvin temperatures. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, there is a question here. Can the S-type system also be equipped with the sample magnet? So the, the S-type system offers um, two magnet sites um, and they can be used so either for two ADR magnets and then the system will, will allow to, um, to run in, in CADR mode offering continuous cooling um, or you can configure it for a one-shot ADR mode and then the second magnet site could in principle be used for, for mounting a sample magnet. So that is possible. However, um, with a custom um, sample stage because the, 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 the standard S-type essential comes with a rather large um, sample stage which is connected to the ADR. So of course, if you would like to, to have a sample magnet installed, the um, sample stage must be fitted into the magnet board. So we will have to, to um, have a, a custom smaller um, stage that can be mounted within um, the sample magnet. Great, great. You have mentioned about the pressure cells. What is the typical dimension that one could use of the pressure the cell? Uh, so um, the puck offers a free diameter of th up to 36 millimeters. So um, of course that's not enough for Paris Edinburgh cell, but for for typical Bridgman and piston cylinder cells, that's um, often enough. Um, so at least the ones that that um, we have worked uh, with so far, um, and there are enough um, terminals to make um, connections for electrical readout. So 36 millimeter in diameter and 100 millimeter in height. So that's that would be the limitation. Okay. There's a question here. How is the heat dissipated from the system or some cooling medium is used? So the heat is, the heat is transferred via the CADR cooling chain to the cryo cooler, and then um, it's transferred out of the system via the closed cycle cryo cooler mechanism. So of course, that's a closed cycle cryo cooler. Um, so that's the way. Um, so in principle, from these higher temperatures provided by the cryo cooler, um, our system is working in a similar way like most other closed cycle cooling systems. And there are no liquid or um, cooling media involved, of course. So uh, the transfer is just via this closed cycle system. Understand. Is there a wire breakout box for all the available connections on the sample puck? Yes. So the system comes with a breakout box that uh, offers connection for each individual um, pin or bondable terminal on the puck. We also offer um, um, other breakout boxes, um, for instance, those that are built by, by QDevil, um, which are optimized for um, measurements of uh, very uh, sensitive uh, quantum systems. So we can also install these directly at our factory. Um, and uh, in this context, I'd also like to mention that we can, of course, also integrate um, various RF wiring options. So the, the L-type can be used with up to four RF lines and the user um, can choose from various configurations, um, particularly from various attenuation configurations. So what is typically done is that you have um, high attenuation on, on three or four lines, while one line um, has zero attenuation and is then used as an output line. So that can also be done um, um, on request. So that's, that's something we offer too. Great, great. All right, the final call for any more questions. Uh, please uh, let me know. Either you can raise your hands and I can unmute you or type in your questions. We are available here for some more time. I am trying to see, I hope I've answered everyone's questions here. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure if all everybody's questions have been answered. 
If not, I don't see any more here. Oh, there's a question on the price. Definitely either Katya, Katya and Isil or Lee, whichever territory you are, we will definitely reach out to you and provide you the price based on the configuration you decide. Uh, you can always send your email to info at qdusa.com and we will get in touch with you, look at your configurations and provide you a quotation. All right, so if there are no more questions, I want to once again thank everybody for joining this webinar. Uh, I hope uh, we have answered everyone's questions. So we look forward to offering you quotations and making a sale. All right, thank you. Bye. Thank you thank also you. for my Yep, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.